Two priests on the patio Pull up a chair and watch the show If there's anything you want to know Just ask Two priests on the patio Yeah! Hello. Welcome to our next installment of Two Priests on the Patio. We're so glad to be able to continue this series of us speaking to you about scripture, about life. I'm Jeff Ward. I'm the priest at St. Cuthbert's Anglican Church in Southeast Oakville. And this is Lucy, our little dog. <laughs> Notice she gets second billing. And I'm Sue Ann Ward. I'm the priest at Grace Anglican Church in Waterdown. Today we want to continue our series of talking about some of Jesus' teachings from our Gospels. And today we want to talk about a parable, the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. This is a parable that comes from Matthew's Gospel. And just like other of Jesus' parables, they're narratives. They're made up fictional stories that are intended to answer questions and to teach. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, question and that teaching in a moment. But first, Sue Ann is going to read for us from Matthew's Gospel. So beginning at this 20th chapter, the first verse. So the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out around 9 o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the market. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out, and he found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But the landowner replied to one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. So as I mentioned a moment ago, Jesus likes to tell these stories, not only to teach, but often to answer questions. And if you go to the end of chapter 19 in Matthew's Gospel, Peter asks Jesus, what is it that their reward will be after giving up everything to be his apostles? And so, at least in part, this is a response to that question. It's possible that Jesus wanted to teach something else anyway, but that question from Peter became a really good reason for him to share this parable and this teaching. And Jesus, even before Peter asked that question, had been teaching, and he had been teaching about the ails of affluence, saying that basically you can't serve two masters, you can't serve God and serve money, and he was telling people that what they really needed to do if they wanted to achieve the kingdom of God was to give up everything that they had. And that's why Peter asked that question, saying, well, we've done that, but what about us? How, how are we going to survive? How are we going to be compensated? And Jesus begins to teach about the kingdom of heaven and what the kingdom of heaven looks like. And that question about, you know, what about us or what's in it for us really is, I think, maybe what really triggered Jesus to tell this parable because this parable addresses the what about us question. This 
parable starts with the landowner going out to find workers for his vineyard, and he starts early in the morning. I guess that was typical at that time. He would start work at 6 in the morning, so he went out and found laborers to start at 6 o'clock in the morning. And he promised them a full daily wage for their full day's work, so that's what they expected. They were going to go out to work. They knew they were going to be going into his vineyard. They would do a full day's work, and they would get a full day's pay. So that's how it starts, which sounded normal to everybody who heard the story. But then he comes back again at 9 o'clock, and he recruits more laborers to go into his vineyard. And again, he tells them, please come into my vineyard if you want to work, and I will pay you a full day's wage for your work in my vineyard. And so he, they do that. They take him up on his offer, and they go to work. And he comes back at noon, and he comes back at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and he recruits more laborers to go into his vineyard. Once again, he promises every one of them a full daily wage for working in the vineyard that day. Mm -hmm. Now, if we understand God to be the landowner in the story, then we understand that God is the one that's going back and back again to the marketplace. So we don't know why, per se, but what I like about it is this idea of the attentiveness of God, of God continually coming to God's people to see what their need is and to respond to that need. And he responds to that need again and again and even hires people at 5 o'clock and then at 6 o'clock the workers all get paid. Interestingly, Jesus instructs the manager who's giving out the wages to start with the last and then work his way back to the first. And by doing so, it occurs to me that he made sure that those who were hired at six in the morning knew what the ones that were hired later got paid. And therefore they knew that they were paid the same full daily wage. But they wanted more than that. They expected more than that. They grumbled when they didn't get more than that, and yet every worker got the same usual daily wage or full daily wage. And for the people who were listening to this parable, that would have been just about as upsetting as the people who, in the story, who got hired at 6 o'clock or even at noon and worked what was, you know, pretty much a full day and yet got paid only the same amount as the ones who got hired and worked only one hour. And that upset is another example of Jesus telling something which just doesn't make sense, and yet he says this is what the kingdom of God would be like, which then makes all of us have to wonder, well, what is it he's really trying to teach? What is he really trying to tell us? And of course he ends the parable like he does many other parables and many other teachings by saying that the first will be last, and the last will be first. Now that is the trigger sentence for people to think about, well, what does that mean? Where am I? Am I the first or am I the last? And what does that mean for me in my life? And for the people who were in that story and the people who were listening to that story, that is what they probably were focused on then. What does that mean? In this story you just told Jesus, where do I land? One of the things that the workers who were hired early in the day grumbled about was the fact that they had to be out in that scorching heat all day working. And it occurs to me that while that is difficult and, and a, a struggle, so is being idle in the marketplace, not knowing if you're going to get hired, not knowing if you're going to feed your be able to feed your family. I think that anxiety is just as difficult, if not more difficult, to bear than just hard work, knowing that you'll be able to feed your family at the end of the day. Yeah, I think it, he was trying to let people know that there are different ways for people to struggle, to suffer, or to work hard, or to wonder about their lives and how that life, you know, uh, can be fulfilled. But I guess the other thing this parable tells us is that Jesus is saying that God believes that 
what we should be receiving each day is what we need, not necessarily what we think we deserve, not necessarily what we think we've earned, not necessarily what we think, you know, we believe, you know, is our rightful uh, amount. So the people who were working the longest, who heard at the end of their day that they weren't going to get paid any more than the people who only worked for an hour, they felt like, well, what does that mean about us? Um, you know, does, is, doesn't our, our work, isn't it valued more than that? And Jesus' message from God is very different. It is you just need to get what you need, not what you want or not what you think you deserve or even to try to accumulate even more. And God seems to be saying that everyone is equal, whereas the workers who started early in the day specifically say, why are you making those people equal to us? It gets me thinking about why those folks may not have been hired early in the day in the first place. And I tried to come up with a list of, of possible reasons, everything from maybe they lived very far away and they had to travel a great distance to get to the marketplace. Maybe they had other responsibilities that they had to take care of, uh, sick family members or other things, young children. Um, maybe they didn't get hired because they were disabled or they looked different. Maybe they were a different religion or a different ethnicity and seen as less and so not hired first. Maybe they didn't look as strong. Um, there's just all kinds of reasons that they may not have been hired until later in the day, but there doesn't seem to be any compassion on the part of those hired early, at least not in this story. They seem to be uh, critical of the landowner's decision to pay them the same wage. And to me, that goes against the idea that we are to love our neighbor. Because if they were showing love for their neighbor, they wouldn't be saying, don't pay that person as much as me. They would be glad that they were being paid equal. And the parable ends beautifully. It ends with the landowner saying, friend, and he's speaking to those who were hired first, who were really grumbling. I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Even he is putting himself sort of at the same level as those workers. He's calling them friend. He's not saying employee or slave or something like that. He is saying, my friend, I'm telling you that I am fulfilling what I promised you. And here is where Jesus seems to sort of really be telling us more about God even than in the rest of the parable, which seems to be more about relationship between people. And this is where God is saying, I love all of you. I love all of you equally. And remember that I created all things, right? This is where God, Jesus goes back to, you know, God is a creator. God created everything. That means everything belongs to God, not you. What you're getting is what you need, and God wants to make sure that you get what you need. And that message is that we're all equal, including me, but even as the landowner, if, and if the landowner is supposed to be God, I am telling you that I love all of you, and I want all of you to be successful, I want all of you to thrive, and I want you all to know that I am sharing with you from what I have created. It isn't what you create, you're just, taking what I am giving to you. And I love that idea of relationship that we get from that word friend, because relationship is important. In the kingdom of God, relationship is everything, and that's why we need to be treating each other with love and not out of jealousy, as the landowner suggests in this parable. That's all we have time for today, but... We're going to pick this up again next time and talk about this parable in the framework of our life t lives today. Um, but thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you'll join us again. And we're really appreciative of all of those of you who have been sending us questions and comments about what we've been talking about the last several weeks. And we hope you'll continue to do that by going to our website, by watching our YouTube videos, and being able to uh, connect with us and with other people in our community. So, lots of love from us to you, and love from Lucy too. God bless you. God bless you. Take care of each other. Be safe.